Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So what does this crucifix and these pens have to do with each other? Hmm, I wonder. Well, I got wood dye on my hand, so that can only mean one thing. So if you remember the 1957 Harley-Davidson pen holder that I made a while back, well, one of our friends liked what they seen and asked if uh, I can make one for them. So here it is. So right now I have Wally in a Box's guitar put off to the side. I'm waiting for some parts to show up for it and I can get back to working on that. But in the meantime, I'm keeping myself busy and working on this project here. Now, the guy who I built the Harley Davidson uh, pen holder for, one of the other guys that, that we know liked it and liked it a lot so although he's not a motorcycle biker into motorcycles or anything like that he is into religion you know and he's not afraid to hide it you know some people kind of keep their religion to themselves or you know whatever but uh you know he wears a crucifix and it's you know plain sight and a, everything else um so i figured well you know I got into this stainless steel jewelry a long time ago, and this was something that I just had sitting in a drawer. Uh, I never wore it. I'm not crazy about the chain itself. Crucifix is, not, is nice, but the chain itself is kind of, I don't know, just a little strange to me. I've never seen anything with links like this before. So it's like, well, I've got this thing sitting around. Why don't we do something with it? So I got some lumber. I showed you guys in a uh, previous video of different types of lumber. I got to make some other projects and some of it is to cut out uh, some tops for guitars. Two of the smaller pieces were for making more of these pen holders uh, just in case you know one another one would come up somehow and I kind of thought maybe it would because of the outcome of the first one I made. So this one here what I ended up doing is my father milled it you know he did the cutout in it we cut it down to size, got it to the shape we wanted it, squared it on all four corners, and he milled it on the mill. So what I ended up doing is taking black, blue, and a lighter blue, a darker blue and a lighter blue, and I started kind of mixing around with the colors on this. First I blacked the whole thing out, sanded it down, and then hit it with the dark blue, sanded that down, and then I hit it with the lighter blue to give it this effect. Now, this piece of wood here was pretty plain in daylight up until you hit it with some water. You got it a little bit wet. And all of this figuring started popping. I was like, wow, this is going to look really nice if it turns out the way that I want it to. So right now what you're seeing is the lighter version of what it looks like now with a skim coat of epoxy resin on it. The cutout where the chain is going to be is half filled with epoxy resin right now. So where you see that it's bursted around the edges and kind of real bright behind the cross, right now that's a little bit darker than what you see in the picture here. And there's a lot of like yellows in the wood, um, some oranges in the wood. That's a lot of stuff just start popping out uh, once I hit the epoxy resin with the rest of it. I did a skim coat over the rest of it and the center of it, the pocket. I filled halfway. So I want the chain and the crucifix to look like to look like it's floating in the epoxy, not sitting on the bottom up against the wood. That's the reason for half filling it first with epoxy. Let that cure. Now. The outside portion, or all around the uh, the other part of it, eh, the other part of it. What I mean by a skim coat of epoxy is there's some cracks and there is some um, not chips, but just some cracking that's part of the uh, characteristics of the wood itself. And I wanted to fill that up with epoxy resin first, in order to, before I put the spinal coat on it, because what's going to happen is bubbles are going to start protruding out of those cracks as they kind of fill up. Now, I don't want that to happen because sometimes you don't catch, like if I walk out of the room over here and go to bed or, or you know, have make dinner or whatever, sometimes those bubbles can come up to the top and get trapped. 
now you have a bubble in your finish that you really don't want and that's what I was trying to prevent with doing a skim coat on there so I did is I did a pour around it the outside edges of the cutout and then squeegeed it into the wood so right now it looks a little bit like shit it's on the darker side than what you see in this picture which is fine because I don't want it to be too light because then the, the chain and the crucifix are not going to pop at you. Uh, but I like the love the way it looks like without the epoxy on it right now. That just came out really, really sharp. With the epoxy on it, it's just a little bit darker. But all in all, it's coming out pretty damn nice. You will see the finished product when I get ready to do the final or after I get done doing the final coat of epoxy. So the chain on the inside there is going to look like it's floating instead of resting on the bottom. And you could tell the difference uh, with the epoxy resin if something's sitting on the bottom or sitting in between. It looks pretty cool. It's got a different type of a look at it, at to it. And it also has, if the light hits it a certain way, it also shows a shadow of the crucifix and the chain um, on the bottom of the wood. So it it's, plays tricks with your eyes a little bit. It's pretty cool.